Hey people, what's going on? It's Monday the 17th, the day after finding out about Alan Holdsworth dying. <coughs> I'm, I'm not done talking about that man. No, I'm not. Um, listening to some Alan Holdsworth in the background, quietly so I don't get banned. You know, uh... Finding out about Alan's death yesterday really fucked my day up, you know, I mean, I wasn't having it in the first place because of Easter and just some things I was feeling, but I don't like, it's a blessing and at the same time, sometimes I don't like getting these intimations, you know what I'm saying, that something is happening or something's going to happen. And this happens on, this happens a lot. Did I know that Alan, I was going to find out that Alan had died? No, but was I feeling something? Yeah. Yeah. Alan Holdsworth was, is my favorite guitar player. It's not that he's the best, and it's not that the best would be my favorite, or that the most skilled would be my favorite. It's the one who touches me the most. And Alan Holdsworth's guitar playing really touches my heart. And he consistently brings tears to my eyes with his solos. It's like he's saying the unsayable. It's like he's speaking beyond words beyond emotion it's very a lot of it is very emotional and yet you have to decide what is it that he's saying because it's so deep and it's so felt there's a yearning a sense of yearning and if you could just understand that's part of what i hear through his playing this yearning to be understood i know i feel it I get it from his music, even if it's not there. Alan Holdsworth's discography is huge. I mean, even though he's not a household name, his credits are in the hundreds. I only have some of his records. But he's brought a lot of joy to me. And I'm happy to say, before I forget, yes, I got to see Alan Holdsworth play live. It was amazing. It was back in the 80s. It was on this tour at this hole. It must have been 87 or 88. I took the CD and got it signed by Alan, which you can barely see there, but also by Gary Husband, who was playing drums, and the bass player, Jimmy Johnson. But this is what's ultra cool about meeting Alan Holdsworth. This much I can remember. I saw him in Kansas City and I live in Omaha, so that's a three hour trip. Went with, I know at least, I know I went with a couple of friends, probably Andy and Frank. I'm sure it was them actually. So we get down there and um, I forget if it was before the show, yeah. So we get down there early enough before the show that we actually bump into Alan and meet him before he plays and. I think what, what transpired was that we told him that we had traveled to see him, you know, and we're just really excited to see him. So he invited us backstage. What He was so nice. Alan was so humble, and here come the messages already. He was so humble. Um, I found out for myself um, that he does not like talking about his music. He doesn't. He would rather talk about beer. My friend Andy, I'm pretty sure, knew this at the time. So, rather than indulge me, Mr. Nerd, about music, he didn't want to talk about music. He wanted to talk about beer, so he just handed me his guitar. So I got to play Alan Holdsworth's guitar and ask him about the guitar. I got to play his guitar and the syntax. It wasn't in back in the dressing room, it was on stage. So I didn't get to touch the, the syntax. Very humble man, very human. 
Here we have Velvet Darkness, his first solo album on CTI, which for many years he disowned. There are still people like John Coltrane 68 who loves this album. I personally agree with Alan. This is weak. This is a weak. This is a weak album still, in my opinion. I know others like it, but I, I don't. <laughs> I think it's weak. He just got better and better. So I agree. I agreed with Alan 100% on the album. I don't know what people are thinking about. I owe you. This is the first, first run of it on the black. It's been in the, the red. This is the first one. I got this as quick as it came out. Just as quick. Private label. I owe you. Alan Holdsworth. I could babble and babble all day. When he made this album um, with Jack Bruce. And yeah, let me make sure now. See, it's been a while since I played this. Yeah. Jeff Berlin on bass and um, Jack Bruce on guest vocals. Road Games. Love this album. Also, he had was with Paul Williams again, who he had first played with in the band Tempest. I don't have Tempest on vinyl. Metal Fatigue. Metal Fatigue. You know, there's a there's a recording of the Eddie Van Halen and Alan Holdsworth jamming. I have a, a copy of it. And Eddie Van Halen is an amazing guitar player, but this tape shows you that he couldn't touch Alan Holdsworth, primarily because Eddie's forte is in pentatonic. I think that's the right scale. And Alan's scales are just out of this world. So, you know, if Eddie had studied with Alan, he probably, he could do it. But on this tape, Alan kept losing him. It was it's really quite entertaining to hear, and it just shows you just what an incredible guitar player Alan Holdsworth was. I showed this a couple times. I love this album, Sand. I just love it. At uh, Atavacron, At Atavacron, however you say this, another great album. The uh, track on here with Tony Williams on drums, Proto, is that it? Uh, Looking Glass, fantastic. With Gordon Beck on piano, All the Things You See. Holdsworth was, the, was a monster. This is, just sucks that he has died. He was 70 and... In the comments on my last video where I just am announcing that, that I just found it out, several comments from people who saw him recently and have seen him said that he didn't look to be in the best of health. I noticed the pictures of him at NAM this year or recently where he was looking kind of bloated. Now, you know he liked to drink beer. I wonder if he quietly drank himself, you know, over the edge. I don't know. And also there's a GoFundMe that the you know this is hitting the family at a bad time as great as alan was i'm not surprised to hear that he didn't have any money that doesn't surprise me at all some of the greatest artists in the world have nothing and some of the most undeserving people have everything trump is a perfect example alan holdsworth was a member of gong for a while espresso this is also it was called gazus in europe his playing really stands out on this album. Love Alan Holdsworth. He was in Soft Machine. He's on the album Bundles. I didn't grab it. It's right over here. I'll grab it. I can see it. Of course, the original incarnation of the band UK, Alan Holdsworth's playing was just incredible on Espresso 2, Espresso 2 with Gong. Here's an album that, um, I've always thought this album really never caught fire. John Stevens touching on with Alan Holdsworth on guitar. I'm gonna play this one and pay a close attention to it today because it gets, it, it gets poo-pooed by the critics and I was agreeing with them, but there's gotta be merit to this beyond the, fact, the mere fact that um, it's Alan Holdsworth playing. I didn't try to find all of the records that I have with Holdsworth on them. I wanted to just show some. You know, the CDs as well. I can honestly say that 
out of all the artists that I love and play, Holdsworth is probably one of the artists that I have over the years probably cumulatively played the most between Alan Holdsworth, the works of Yellow Magic Orchestra, Sakamoto, and Genesis and Peter Gabriel. Those are my top plays when I think about over the years, who are my go-to people. That's who they are. Alan Holdsworth probably tops the list on CD, The Things You See with Gordon Beck. Such a such an amazing guitarist. Such an amazing. On CD, Velvet Darkness. This one I've worn out. Warden Cliff Tower. This has one of my favorite solos by him. Zarabeth is the name of the song. I love the solo on that album. That makes me cry. Just, I can't help it. Hardhead Area. Even though I could have bought this anywhere when I was in Japan for the summer of 94, I remember buying this in a record shop in Shibuya. And it was significant. It was kind of like, I need to buy some Alan Holdsworth in Japan. You know, this is this is a bucket list trip of my life that I'm in Japan. What's significant? Alan Holdsworth. Secrets. Played this probably ten times yesterday. The track on here, Joshua. Listen to that solo. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. Alan Holdsworth, None Too Soon. I'm just realizing now that I didn't grab all. Flat tire. I have some DVDs. I have some bootlegs here. This is Alan Holdsworth live at the Calgary Theater. What an amazing guitarist. Alan Holdsworth live in Florida, 1989. Bootleg. Alan Holdsworth live in Europe. 1992. I'm not listening to Holdsworth now. It went into another track by a band called Blue Neck. I'll go back to Holdsworth in the background quietly. Alan Holdsworth's guitar playing and what he had attempted to do on that instrument is a perfect example of what I think is lost in current in the current uh, atmosphere of entertainment and fast, cheap, stupid music. I know I'm an older guy and some young people will just say, well, you're just an old guy, you know. But no, I'm not. I'm still in touch with what's going on. I'm still very much alive and in the moment. And we need people like Ellen Holdsworth. We need people like Tosin Abasi of Animals as Leaders. We need people like that to keep pushing things forward and keep making music, make music relevant. Music is relevant. You know, I did resist when rock and roll, when rap and hip hop became ro the rock and roll. When it became the rock and roll of today, I was one of those who resisted it. You know, I did. I understand that it is the rock and roll it, up to date. It, it, it is the voice of the youth. I just do lament that so much of what is being spoken is saying absolutely nothing. And that the results or the out, the effect of all that nothingness is very obvious in the tenor of society today. Music has always been used for a number of things, but one of the things that music has been used for knowingly has been enlightenment and to raise energy levels. And um, popular music is not doing that, it's lowering it. Alan Holdsworth was someone who, when he played, tried his best to raise, raise the bar and to bring something of lasting beauty into this world. Rest in peace, Alan Holdsworth. I can't say enough about that man and his music. 
I don't have any money to contribute to his GoFundMe. Apparently, this has caught his family at a really bad time. You know, I'm not surprised. As good as he was, he, he wasn't. He wasn't rich. I know from experience that some of the most deserving have the least. So, I hope that people reach out and help the family out. Alan Holdsworth, one of the greatest musicians who has ever lived, in my humble opinion.